welcome to a discussion on development from below this discussion relates to our ma program in sociology since long we have been talking about varieties of this development perspective and varieties of the target group on which developmental initiatives are implemented in this discussion first we'll talk about the developmental concern and the developmental target group on which varieties of these initiatives are initiated major concern of the development has been to bring those people those who have remained under developed bring them within the four four front within the uh, whole arena of development in this discussion we will first try to elaborate the collective initiative especially for those people uh, those who have remained um, socially excluded socially deprived uh, or the weaker section in the society or later on we talk them the marginalized section of the society then we will talk about what has been the perspectives of development and how an alternative perspective what you call about a perspective the developmental perspective from below is thought of and integrated within the developmental initiatives in india uh, when we talk about the development as i told we talk about development for home usually when we talk about the developmental initiative we talk about the people those who have been deprived of the benefits of development deprived of the avenues of upward mobility in the society since late 1940s and also we can go little uh, back maybe uh, 1930s uh, there has been wider talk about this depressed classes of indian society then weaker section of the indian society the disadvantaged section of the indian society the excluded section of the indian society we have talked about the poor talked about the vulnerable sections now we talk about a kind of a marginalized section of our society so developmental initiative are usually implemented looking at the needs looking at the possibilities of inclusion of those people within the wider spectrum of the society so first let us know what are those developmental deprivation for home we talk about then uh, second phase will go about what are those developmental initiatives are implemented and third section will talk about um, now what are those special measures are initiated uh, for the purpose of development from the below as a target group now we usually talk about um, especially 2001 uh, onward uh, the term like marginalized group and marginality as widely accepted uh, to 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 address the developmental need uh, of the deprived section of the society it's having a meaning uh, for, for for accepting the term uh, the marginalized section of the society when we talk about a marginalized section of the society we usually con consider that there have been certain barriers barriers of under development those barriers are to be demolished the barriers are to be done away with so that people can be brought into the mainstream of the society so what are those barriers it is widely talked about those barriers are usually talked about some of the barriers are linked to each other and those barriers creates the position of marginality in the society so we talk about some of the barriers those are horizontally related to each other that is economic barrier social barrier cultural barriers and political barriers and those are linked to the varieties of the undercurrents in the society if somebody are economically poor they are linked to their social deprivation cultural deprivation and political non participation so by only one example we feel that they are interlinked so we are find a varieties of horizontally related barriers in the society that 
contributes to their marginalization in the society. Then also we find something historically cumulative barriers. What are those historically cumulative barriers? Some generation in the past, those who have been historically deprived of educational benefit, the political benefit or economic benefit, those barriers keep on continuing even in the present situation. So what we feel they are historically cumulative barriers. Then we talk about the, another barrier, the situational barriers. That is, in a contemporary situation, even though they have historically uh, inherited varieties of barriers, those barriers have also taken a different shape. Those barriers may be the barriers of denial and deprivation. Those barriers of insecurity and domination. Barriers of legitimization and reproduction of those barriers. And also there is a possibility because of these barriers, people keep on protesting in the society, the revolt in the society that invites the state and civil society intervention for the redressal of those barriers. So let us go a little deeper when you talk about what are those, uh, you know, uh, denial and deprivation. We talk about the uh, economic denial and deprivation. Uh, that is, um, economically people are uh, denied of equal access to the productive resources like the land, technology, those who are the factors of production. Land, labor, capital, organization, those who are the factors of production a vast section of the people are getting deprived to get an access of these economic resources. Then we find the social, cultural uh, denial and also denial, uh, deprivation and barriers, also the educational barriers, barriers for social mobility. We, uh, that is empirical research in India widely shows that uh, there is a vast segment of the population being uh, belong to the lower caste or the ethnic group or the inferior race, or the religious minorities, or uh, women categories, or a deprived ethnicity, they are deprived of effective social capital, effective potential to get the access to education, effective potential to get access to variety of the cultural capital in the society. So what we find, those deprivation also creating certain kind of barriers for uh, to get developed in the society. Then we find a very uh, categorical political barriers because it is not important what you are. It is not important how you are. It is important that is whom you know politically. So what happened? Until unless there is an element of political association, association to the political um, power structure, a vast section of the population remain deprived or suffer from the barriers of mobility in the society. So what is important that there should be some mechanism to the break the barriers of political isolation, break the barriers of non-participation in the political processes, uh, those barriers are to be demolished. So that also is to be another um, kind of uh, developmental initiative. Third is the uh, another cultural barrier is usually created what are those cultural barriers? Some segment of the people, they are made to be the part society and part culture. Part society and part culture, it usually remains because of increasing number of migration of the people from one part of the country to another. Or maybe social and economic dislocation. They emerge to be the outsider from the within. They also emerge to be the marginal man. Through this process, there is also a process of segregating a large segment of the population with the practice of purity of pollution in the society, also simultaneously creating a structure of hierarchy in the society. And those hierarchy creates varieties of deprivation and barriers in the society. So situationally, we find there is a position of economic barriers in the society, social cultural barriers, political barriers and varieties of the exclusive cultural barriers, those who are practiced in the society, so the practice of the caste system, the ethnic system, and simultaneously, um, uh, you know, localized social order uh, th th that deprives the people in getting access to the benefits of development in this society. 
these barriers also creates the barriers of insecurities and domination in the society. Uh, what are those insecurities? Um, that is because of this social barrier and not getting the avenues of upward mobility, a vast segment of the people are remaining insecure and compelled to work in the hazardous economic condition, hazardous environmental condition and they are exposed to varieties of the calamities like the cloud blast, flood, drought, etc. like this. And those barriers are also widely again um, uh, insecurity also contribute to a hierarchy and domination in the society because those are not only substantive insecurity in terms of participation in the hazardous work. In the hazardous works, people participate those who are from the economically weaker section of the society and also those who are from the lower caste or ethnic background. You will very often find that people, those who are working in the extramural, manual, demeaning economic activities, they belong to the in the lower caste or economically weaker section of the society. So there has been a, a kind of um, intersectionality between the caste and the hierarchy and because of the practice of caste uh, hierarchy, uh, there is an element of domination. So whatsoever the domination in the society, the economic and political term that get widely legitimized within the practice of the caste order in this society. So what we find, uh, there has also been an emergence of the dominant group in the society that dictates the terms of others, terms of others, facilitating the process, their own upward mobility in the society, but also creating the barriers of barriers for development for vast segment of the population. And by doing so, they also, they also reproduces, uh, not only give legitimacy, also reproduces those barriers. What are those barriers, those reproduction? Reproduction of the negative connotation of collective identity. Some happens to be dull, the lazy, the criminal, the ex-criminal. So what we find, a, 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 a kind of a negative connotation is developed for vast segment of the population to create the barriers for their development in the society. These are reproduced within the given the values of the caste, class, ethnicity and gender in the society. And what happened in the process, maybe the natural differences between the caste, uh, natural differences in the gender also becomes a hierarchic position between the men and women. So what those, those inequalities, uh, those kind of natural inequalities also get a legitimized form of social hierarchy. So we find there is simultaneously the practice of primordial hierarchy in the society and they keep on uh, having a hegemonic position in the society, remaining unquestioned in, the, uh, in their authority, unquestioned to have access of the productive resources. So what we are talking about so far, the how those barriers are created through the institutional arrangement and got legitimized and reproduced over centuries or over decades and th that creates the barriers for development uh, in the society. So when there are more and more barriers for develop under development, more and more question in the society, there is a possibility of people's protest and resistance. That's why um, it is widely found that uh, uh, those who suffer from the barriers of development remain underdeveloped. Uh, they, they reflect the behavior, uh, uh, trait of deviant behavior, the non-conformist behavior. And also those segments of the population um, uh, uh, widely participate in the radical protest, radical violence and social disruption. They also create a culture of in-group and uh, uh, out-group and develop a kind of uh, boundaries within varieties of the social group. So ultimately what happened, there may be reproduction of what we call ethnocentrism and also simultaneously a, a culture of group in itself and that, that breeds the whole culture of um, uh, radical protest in the society. So uh, barrier creates an amount of exclusion, exclusion creates an amount of protest, protest may be uh, at time radical, uh, at time non-conformist and also um, uh, you know, creating varieties of social disruption um, in various parts of the country. 
all these hot up, you know, all these beings uh, 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 invites the state intervention. Well, state and civil society intervention is quite important uh, for the development um, uh, of the people in the society. Uh, so uh, what, we, what we find that gradually in the process of development um, of those kind of protests and those kind of marginality and barriers, a new state has also realized it is not that it is only the social scientists realizing the uh, erection of barriers, developmental barriers in the society. It is the state also realizes those barriers. Civil society also realizes that barriers and they, they bring in varieties of the developmental initiative uh, by bringing in new, uh, new kind of uh, state policies, uh, international policies. Uh, for the development of the people, uh, those who have uh, remained away uh, from the uh, mainstream of the society. Now we find that, uh, let us come, come from this uh, broad to local, uh, that is uh, Universal Declaration of Human Rights of the UNO 1948. It widely talks about that all human beings are born free and uh, equal and everyone has the right to have a standard living, including the right to food, to clothing, housing, medical care, and necessary social services. Then we find also it is widely reflected in the International Convenient on Economic, uh, Social, and Cultural Rights, 1966, uh, Rights to Declaration, 1986, Social Development uh, uh, Report, um, 1990, World Development Summit, 1995, um, then World Development Report and varieties of the World Bank Report. It's widely talked about uh, the need of state intervention to break the barriers to development uh, in the society. In Indian context, um, uh, we know that uh, India uh, accepted um, uh, a varieties of development initiative starting from 1947. Uh, as a part of this developmental initiative in 1947, uh, uh, so that development reaches to the maximum segment of the population, uh, uh, so that there is a process of development uh, that is all inclusive. Uh, so it took place um, uh, 1952 itself, uh, the planning commission was and planning commission started bringing out its own kind of draft report, what should be the process of planned development in the country. And it talked about in the first five year plan itself, the need for radical agrarian reform so that developmental initiative goes uh, to the uh, benefit, goes to the people, those who are standing uh, uh, at the last man uh, in the line. Uh, so what it started doing about 1952 itself, the Radical Land Reform Act, and simultaneously talked about the industrial development. It talks about the Panchayatiras, uh, the community development program. So initiated the policy of growth with stability, it talks about economic development through heavy industrialization, nationalization of the blank, uh, bank and other kind of institution. Uh, it also simultaneously talked about the benefits of development should reach out to the maximum. So it talks about the growth with stability. Country needs stability, country needs growth. That was a kind of slogan in 1950s and 60s. In 1970s, it was widely realized that, that the growth, whatsoever little was taking place, it has not reached out to the maximum segment of the population. So there is there was a kind of realization that that growth process should be uh, rethought of uh, and, and a new discourse should come in. It started talking about the growth with justice in 1970s. And uh, 1980s it talked about if development is to be uh, people-centric, and from the below, there should be people's participation. So it talked about a development with empowerment. Uh, that's why in 1993 uh, uh, onward, there was 93, there was a 73rd constitutional amendment. It widely accepted um, 
uh, uh, that is village panchayati raj to be the cornerstone of people's participation in the developmental initiative of the state. Um, then we, we, we find that 1901 and onward, the country is talking about the inclusive development, that is development with inclusion. So we find a kind of a paradigmatic shift in the developmental perspective and uh, within that, gradually the concern for the people, those who have been excluded from the society, that's why it is talking about development with inclusion. It is talking about develop empowerment of these people, those who have no power. So it is talking about development with empowerment. It is talking about development with justice. People, those who have not got the justice out of development, that should be development with justice. That's why gradually they develop the new framework of development, that is human development and social development. Human development accepted the fact that economic growth is a means to an end. End is the human development. Human development will ensure um, that is uh, the educational, the health, employment, and shelter security of the people. And it's also widely talked about the development benefit should reach out to the all segment of the people that is talking about social development. So what we find a new kind of developmental initiative it has come. So let, let us, uh, till now, let us just have a small recap that of what we have discussed. We discussed that there have been varieties of the developmental barriers in the society, social, economic, political. Many of these barriers are relational, some are historically cumulative, and also many of those barriers are situational. Then we find the varieties of the initiative are taken by the state, both at the international level and also national level, to break the barriers of this development. There have been a talk of more and more involvement of the people uh, with a developmental initiative. So here, let us go to the next step, the step for uh, what we talk about, the step for development from the below, uh, what have been the uh, initiative. Uh, when you talk about the development uh, from below, it is widely, we can go to the um, uh, Gandhi and view of Gandhi widely talked about, uh, uh, that is, uh, what should be the uh, involvement of people, nature of involvement of the people um, uh, with the developmental initiative. Uh, Gandhiji was talking about development from the villa in terms of the practice of Sadeshi, that everybody should be involved, uh, both mentally, physically, uh, to indigenize the developmental process. Within this developmental process, the whole center of development would be the village. That is, uh, he, he wanted to develop not only a culture of Swadeshi, he was talking about a kind of a Swadeshi mentality. That is a determination to find all necessities of life of India, that's too, through the labor and intellect of the people, those who live in the villages. So it, it, it is a kind of a development from the uh, below. That is development from the village itself. If the village is developed, it is the district that will develop. It's the district develop, it is, it, 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 it is the state that will develop. If the state develops, it's the nation that will develop. So Mahatma Gandhi was talking about the whole foundation of the development should be linked to the practice of Swadeshi. For him, the practice of Swadeshi will bring a sense of empowerment, a new identity of the people uh, living in the villages, and ultimately, they will enjoy enormous variety of economic liberty and also freedom. We have to accept this fact at this stage that Mahatma Gandhi was an universalist. He was also simultaneously uh, an idealist. He was trying to develop a framework of an ideal society. That framework be, will be founded on Swadeshi and Charka and that, that, will, that will start its initiation from the village life itself. And uh, when he talked about Swadeshi, that is the uh, the development from the below. He was talking about uh, Swadeshi that is called for the self-government, self-reliance, self-employment of the people and particularly of those for, for all villagers. So it, it was kind of a self-centric, collective self-centric development, development from the below. So and here he was talking about the development of the below. All the economic and political power should lie on the village assemblies. That is also another another kind of a um, cornerstone of this development. And what he talked about, that is 
the development from the below should with the use of the indigenous product and the all services it should come from the indigeneity which is the local resources maximum use of these resources are to brought in and what it talked about uh, in the domain of politics that Swadeshi relies on asking making use of uh, indigenous institution that is the Panchayatiraj institution so if it is to be development from the below uh, it is not only the uh, village panchayat the village assemblies to be uh, mostly empowered um, the Swadeshis that is the whole economy is to be founded uh, in it self sufficiency to be founded uh, in it and he talked about uh, uh, that is, um, uh, mass of the poverty of the people uh, could be removed because poverty is one of the concern of this uh, barriers to develop and remove. If the spirit of Swadeshi is followed uh, with the rigor and economic and industrial life, because it is the whatsoever he was talking about the true kind of uh, interlinkages with agriculture and the, and the cottage and household industry. That is that is the Khadi. Um, uh, industries he's talked about. So he tried to have a, a kind of a fine kind of interaction, intertuning between um, um, Swadeshi, that is the village, um, uh, uh, industry, uh, agriculture, and the people's development that is widely interlinked uh, with the uh, people's participation uh, through the village assemblies, what you know, the village panchayat. Uh, Mahatma Gandhi in his constructive work, he widely talked about uh, the how, how, how this uh, developmental initiative be initiated. Then he talked about the a specific kind of a plan uh, and he targeted these are the things to be taken into consideration. And obviously if one tries to take a link from each and every item, it should, it should go for this um, uh, development from the below. He talks about the communal unity. A communal uh, uni you know, uh, unity should be there um, across India. That communal foundation of the communal unity should be founded at the village panchayat itself, at the village assembly itself. So it, it is the foundation stone from there, the village unity, the communal unity should be founded on. Second is the removal of untouchability. Um, that is, if the, there is a practice of untouchability, the free flow inculcation of identity of in, uh, universality, identity of humanity um, uh, can't take shape. So what he was talking about, uh, removal of untouchability be given a priority with that initiative from the below. Then also prohibition, that is um, no alcohol, um, uh, uh, a country that will be free from the malice of alcohol. He also widely talked about the practice of um, uh, khadi, as I was talking a few seconds back, that is, Khadi is the foundation stone of development from the below. That is, it is the practice of charka and varieties of this local industries, uh, village industries are to be developed. He also talked about development from below should have this whole sense of, um, uh, you know, village sanitation. Um, uh, uh, program now we talk about the Shachata mission what Mahatma Gandhi already talked in 1948 that is uh, uh, India a, a clean India uh, should have a village sanitation program uh, the new and basic education that is the Noya Talim that is that is a kind of uh, his constructive program and also he talked about the adult education um, you may be knowing um, uh, that is uh, in our country, even though we consider 75% of the people are illiterate, it means 25% uh, of our population are illiterate. Um, even we, when you count the literate people, you, we count only the people, those who are having the uh, simple counting, writing and comprehension uh, ability. So they belong to the 25% of the population. What Mahatma Gandhi was talking about, people, those who have been semi-literate or illiterate, there should be a process of lifelong learning through a process of adult education so that there is a process of inclusion within the developmental initiative. And there should be a process of uh, constructive work for women in society. So what we find, what Gandhi has already talked about, a kind of developmental initiative, initiative from the below, that is, we have to accept that. And this is, this is the foundation stone uh, of, of de uh, development from the below. But how these have been 
partly initiated, partly accepted in varieties of our developmental scheme. Let us go a little bit there. You may be knowing that in 1951, um, when uh, there was a talk about um, the agrarian reform, there was also a Gandhian movement, Bhutan movement started with Kripalani and other Gandhian leaders. They started taking the land from the big landowners and started distributing among these rural poor. So, it's, so giving a land, only not giving, giving um, a piece of earth to somebody, but also giving an, a, a sense of belonging, a sense of identity, a sense of self-employment in that piece of land. So what they were trying, a kind of uh, rejuvenating the economy through people's participation and people's movement, they initiated the Bhutan movement. So nothing can take place without, in our country without the process of collective mobilization. So collective mobilization for land distribution started in 1951 itself. Um, so th th that is an initiative for, for development uh, from below. There has also been initiative of community development program in 1952. Uh, uh, that is um, a, a kind of a project is widely accepted uh, all over India. That is um, uh, a program that will bring agricultural, horticultural, animal husbandry, all integrated development of the village uh, through a developmental uh, mission. So that was implemented in India in 1952. Um, we also simultaneously find that there was uh, integrated rural development program in 1978. It was widely talking about the holistic development of the village with the initiative from the village itself, um, the villager itself. So we find uh, those initiatives are taken in 1978. Um, then we find uh, a state-sponsored development program that is the Antadaya program. Uh, it is a program uh, looking at the need of the people at the grassroots. Uh, people, those who are the poorest among the poor, they are targeted, giving certain economic um, incentive, giving certain employment, and also entrepreneurial uh, activities. So there, uh, there is a scheme uh, for the development of the people uh, from the below, that is an Antadaya program. Uh, no development program can sustain without the participation of the youth. India has uh, found that is the highest growth of unemployment in the rural areas. So there is a problem of, there is a program of training for rural youth for self-employment. It is widely talked about the tribalism. So um, the varieties of the initiatives are taken. So the rural youths are targeted uh, for self-employment employment in agriculture, self-employment in varieties of the business activities, local small business activities, um, the fisheries, the goateries, the animal husbandry, the beekeeping. So varieties of the activities were taken with the initiative for development from the below. Um, then 1979 onward, when the varieties of this rural livelihood mission, um, that is how the livelihood of the rural people can be ensured. So there was, uh, there was, a mission that. Simultaneously, some of the programs are going at that point of time, um, the drought prone area development program. Some of the areas of the country are drought prone. So, uh, special packages are given for that. There are hill areas development program. Uh, the, some of the hill areas, they were taken in terms of certain geographic areas, certain uh, uh, packages are initiated for that. Um, Simultaneously, uh, some of the target areas, special component plan for the scheduled cars, scheduled drives, and also women, these are taken into consideration. Um, that is, some of the special target groups are taken, and special incentives are given for the developmental uh, initiative. Uh, then we find that um, uh, uh, Mahatma Gandhi National Rural Employment Guarantee Scheme, it has come in a big way. That is a kind of a developmental initiative from below. That is, uh, government of India has taken the initiative uh, to give, to assure employment a minimum of 100 days um, uh, to the people uh, in the rural areas and uh, also simultaneously give them a certain developmental um, uh, initiative. So what we find a kind of 
um, employment guarantee scheme uh, for the rural people uh, because it is the employment giving them the opportunities to earn uh, through that earning they can um, get engaged with the developmental initiative um, of the state. Uh, what is important at this stage is that now we have seen uh, that is state has initiated varieties of the uh, programs and the scheme uh, for, uh, for economic well-being of the people, those who are at the margin uh, or economically vulnerable, socially vulnerable uh, people. Uh, there has also been varieties of NGO activism in the country. NGOs are working uh, to ensure self-sufficiency of the people at the grassroots. And they have taken into consideration um, uh, some of the initiative uh, like um, uh, what are the resources available in the rural areas. Uh, use those resources and the rural talent and give them certain training and uh, keep them engaged with the economic initiative so that the developmental initiative may exploit the local resources, may be exploited uh, and that may create certain resources and the wealth and employment opportunities for the rural people. So NGOs have worked in that way. They have also worked with the local self-help group for the cattle, for the beekeeping, uh, for the goatery, for the fisheries. And self-help group has been widely successful, uh, especially uh, to organize the rural women uh, for their employment generation scheme in various parts of the country. Uh, they have also simultaneously worked uh, for the health, education, employment generation, and also uh, small housing scheme. So what we find, these are the varieties of the developmental initiatives are taken um, uh, to integrate the people uh, with the whole process of development uh, from um, below. But what important at this stage is that the main agency for development from below, uh, as an all India network, we are having the, the village panchayati raj institution. Village panchayati raj institution, they identify the local level resources and both in terms of the talent available, in terms of liabilities, those are to be addressed. Also, in terms of the possibilities of rejuvenating the local resources by making an intersectionality with the resources available in other parts of the country. So, what we find that Panchayati Raj institution has emerged to be one of the effective tools to implement uh, the initiative of development uh, from below. Uh, because it is the Panchayati Raj institution that makes the um, the, the mapping of the local resources, utilizes the local resources, know the needs of the local resources and, and supervise their need in terms of governmental scheme and also make the scheme in terms of the local need. And when the uh, sociological uh, uh, studies widely talked about that, uh, local initiative and initiative from below, grassroots developmental scheme, has been widely successful in those places, while there has been pressure from the below. Pressure from the below means local mobilization initiated by the um, local NGOs, and those are supplemented or complemented with the initiative by the Panchayat Raj institution. So if there is a complementarity of the initiative between the non-governmental organization and the civil societies on the one hand and the Panchayati Raj institution with people's initiative on the other, we find there is every possibilities of yielding a better results. So at this stage, let us uh, come, to, uh, come to this uh, conclusion that India is a country which has been experiencing varieties of developmental barriers for a vast segment of the population. Those barriers are social, economic and political and also cultural, number one. Number two, there has been significant state and political intervention to reduce those barriers and many of those barriers which we are talking about was widely undermined by Mahatma Gandhi in his constructive work program, in his program of the Gram Sharaj and also in his program for uh, village regeneration that is he talked about village self-sufficiency other program. We, also have to, we have also talked about that how various governmental initiative and various schemes are launched by government of India and the state government um, uh, for the 
to, to, to encourage the process of development from the below and lastly come to the conclusion based on varieties of the sociological studies taken across India that uh, whenever and wherever there is intersectionality and complementarity between the initiative of non-government organization and Panchayati Raj institution, these have given the best results um, uh, for the uh, initiatives those were taken from the below. Thank you very much for being with this lecture.